Council. Will the clerk please read the quote for the meeting? Thank you, Mayor. From every ending comes a new beginning. Thank you very much. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is the approval minutes from our last Common Council meeting. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Move to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next is uh, resignation, city attorney. Thank you, Your Honor. There's an email from uh, Jose Arroyo advising that uh, he's resigning from the city planning commission. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Move to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, Item 4.1 is confirmation of council appointments. City Attorney. Uh, honorable members of the council, I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Jane Davis Wood, business owner, to be considered for appointment to the Business Improvement District to fill the unexpired term of Tyler Ott, whose term expires 12-31-16, signed by the mayor. Thank you very much. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Uh, move to confirm. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. That motion is before us. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next item is the public forum. City Clerk. Um, first on our list is Jason Peters. Jason? Jason, could you, you please give us your name and address? Sure, it's Jason Peters, 1225 Kaufman Avenue. <coughs> and you will have five minutes, sir. All right, good evening. I'm Jason Peters, and tonight I come to you not as a board member of the Army Foundation or as a representative of Field of Dreams. I come to you tonight as a taxpayer and citizen of Sheboygan. I watched on April 8th all three plus hours of the Common Council meeting. I know in the past I've criticized some of you on your actions, but tonight I want to praise a few. All the persons, Van Akron, Vanderweel, and Herman. Your speeches reminded me of myself when I was younger. You spoke with facts and a conviction from your heart. I also want to tip my hat to one of my aldermen, Alderman Bourne. Although we may disagree on the Field of Dreams vote, you were professional in the attempt to have the vote done that night. But I do have one criticism. Alderman Carlson, I will again publicly thank you for your time you served in the military. But in my opinion, for you to call to have the vote taken at a later point, when the council already voted on the reclassification that night, looked to me as a desperate call to try to win at all cost. You stated, I think we owe it to the city and residents of Sheboygan to have a full body to take a vote on such an important matter. Was the reclassification not an important matter? Now, the next vote is going to be Wednesday, April 29th. I would hope all 16 older persons will be there, and not only the 12 you need for this to pass, but time will tell. Which leads me to Alderman Thiel, the man that I told my son, who played youth football, to always look up to. Although you are in favor of the Aurora Plan, you stood behind what you believed was right, and you would not vote on this topic. According to the Sheboygan Press, on March 20th, it was stated Alderman Thiel, who has ties to youth football group that could benefit from the plan, has already said he will abstain from voting. Then on April 3rd, the press asked, what have you been telling potential voters that would make you a better candidate? Your response, well, in my area, there's been a big fuss about the whole Aurora plan to build over Field of Dreams, and that's my area. I have chosen to abstain from that vote just because of my connections with Sheboygan Youth Football. I hope that proves to them that you know I do have integrity and I have the best interests of this city. It's just that in certain circumstances I have other interests, so that's why I decided to abstain and instill the integrity part I do bring to the council. 
On April 15th, it said, Theo even made the decision part of his re-election campaign, telling the Sheboygan press that he has shown his integrity by abstaining. But while Theo abstained on the comprehensive plan change vote, he's received calls urging him to vote on the matter and is still thinking very hard about whether to do so. So, in your quotes, maybe voting is an integrity thing to do since I have no financial gain in this and I feel it is the right thing for the city, Theo wrote when asked by Sheboygan Press about his plans. Alderman Theo, I disagree with your decision on the Field of Dreams and that's okay. But I look up to you as a man who has integrity, who believes what is right and what is wrong. You see, Sheboygan's a small city and a year and a half ago when I got involved with the armory, I talked to a lot of people, but every alderman here. And although I do not judge my beliefs on hearsay, I do listen. Alderman Thiel, what I have heard is you're an honest man. I have not heard one negative comment about you. That is why for you to run a campaign saying you will abstain from voting, I know there's no way you can vote now. You are a coach. You taught today's youth, and I know you taught them the meaning of hard work and the meaning of honesty, something I've been doing for 19 years as a teacher. All we really have in life is our word. What kind of legacy do you want to be remembered for having? Great leaders don't always do everything right, but when it comes time, they always do the right thing. In closing, if everyone here does what they believe is right in their heart, I will accept that. But I would like to end on this. Honesty is an expensive gift. Don't count on it from cheap people. <coughs> Alderman Thiel, I know you're not a cheap person. Stick to what you know is right in your heart. You campaigned on a promise, and I feel you need to stand by that promise. Uh, next on the list is Renee Rush. Renee, could you come up to the front, please? Can I have your name and address? Renee Roosh, 2301 North 34th Street, Sheboygan. And you'll have five minutes. Thank you. If you truly believe that you are voting for the greater good, as was discussed April 8th, then of the 49,000 citizens in this city, why is it that less than 1% of the population will benefit from this deal with Aurora? Just this past weekend on the Field of Dreams, there are many pickup games going on, not the, not the authorized soccer games, not the baseball games that were played by the, by the baseball teams, but families out there. Volleyball was happening, soccer, baseball. Children were utilizing the playground structure. And no one got hurt, amazingly. You've compared the Boots and Complex to the Wildwood Complex in the city, where the city owns it, but the clubs would maintain it. At least that's what your hope was going to be. We were told many times that the public can access the fields, the new fields that were going to be developed, any time, like at Wildwood Complex. Except when I went by Wildwood Complex this weekend, it's chained, locked, said park is closed, do not use the diamonds, opens May 15th. Is that what's going to happen at the new Bootson Complex? It will be chained up and locked and only open during soccer season? Are you really going to let the public, the regular Joe Schmoes like myself, walk on those multi-million dollar fields after we spent all this time and energy? I question that. We can't even walk on Wildwood fields. Currently, Field of Dreams is open to the public year round. There's nothing that's locked other than the restrooms. You can go on there at any time, any time of the year and use it. I want to point out another decision that was made by the Council for the Greater Good of the Citizens in Sheboygan that has served less or will serve less than 1% of the population. It's talking about taking commercial property off the tax roll, the Boston store. When all is said and done, the Boston store will cost the taxpayers approximately $1 million. $1 million that should go towards fixing our roads because they are a shamble. Go from the purchase of it to the demolition of it to the reconstruction of the city lot and the taxes that are owed on it from the city to the city. Again, that is way more than what you planned, just like at the Boots and Complex is going to cost way more than you anticipate. We can't afford this. This is for less than 1% of the city's population to use some green space between, uh, I don't know, because Fountain Park isn't good enough for concerts, 
I can't figure this out. Apparently, I don't have the right last name to get things happening in this town. Another decision made by the council that serves less than 1% of the population is the marina. I know we've gone over this several times, but the city pays a firm out of Milwaukee to run that area, to run the boat slips and to run it. It also budgets $45,000 annually just to maintain it. The reality is the past several years, the city has spent $200,000 to $300,000 for annual maintenance and fix up costs on the marina alone. Now tell me, is that giving 49,000 people in the city access? No, you have to be part of the marina club to use that. Now the city wants to spend approximately $80,000 for an outside firm to do a study, to discuss and figure out what should we do with the marina. What was the study say? It's anticipated that it's saying that it will cost two and a half million dollars just to upgrade and fix the marina to stop the bleeding. We were told Aurora needed the Field of Dreams site and that was the only site that would work. It was on a bus line, it was centrally located, and it would reduce cab fare for many of their clients. <clears throat> now on April 8th we heard that they are going to threaten to leave the city if they do not get that site because that is the only site that fits for them. What's going to happen to the bus line? There's no bus line from Sheboygan to Sheboygan Falls. The cab fare will increase and it's not centrally located. Are we really going to believe that they will do that? I like to call their bluff on that one. And last year alone, you have made several decisions that were not in the best interest of the public. What will, we, what will we be guaranteed if this deal goes through? The 99,000, or I'm sorry, the 99% or the other, you know, 48,000 citizens will be guaranteed the destruction of 35 acres of green space, the destruction of a vibrant neighborhood, increase in taxes to cover the costs that aren't being used right now, increased traffic in the area of Field of Dreams, ill roads, roads that are unrepaired, that are shambles, increased risk of children's safety. These are the guarantees that the rest of the population of the city would get. And I want to call out one more thing. Unlike Alderperson uh, Marilyn Donahue, she's not here this evening, but I do want to say I do not enjoy this public discourse. This may be exciting for some of you to hear and to witness this democracy going on, but this has caused a great deal of stress in my life. Excuse me, your time is up. I'd like to take my extra minute. Hold on, we need a motion from the floor. So moved. <coughs> Thank you. As I was saying, this may be exciting for you. It is not exciting for me. I've learned a great deal. I am not a politician. I've learned a little bit about the politics and the politicking of this city, and I am ashamed. This has caused a great deal of stress in my life. I have shed many tears on this. I have lost many nights of sleep on this. I have increased anxiety and stress and weight loss due to this issue, all since February. And I've also discovered that I do not have a very wonderful liking of my city anymore. It has shaded how I view where I live, and I once was very proud to live here. I don't know if I, I, I just don't feel that way anymore. This has turned the city upside down, and for what? For hopes and dreams, for the hope of two hundred or $330,000 in tax revenue, and the possibility of seven new physician jobs. Next on the list is Alizé de, de Milan. Can we get your name and home address, please? Yes, my name is Alize Desmoulins, and my home address is 1704 North 35th Street in Sheboygan. All right, and you have five minutes. Thank you. So I want you to vote no to the proposed rezoning of the Field of Dreams property on April 29th. Why, you might ask. Strict adherence to zoning regulations protects all of Sheboygan citizens. So I would like to urge you to consider that this is not simply a NIMBY issue as it's been quoted in the past. If we build over the Field of Dreams, we will lose the current equity of providing a north side recreational area that provides a balance to the south side horseman. 
Sports complex. The current setup ensures that both sides of the city have facilities. The Field of Dreams supposedly being poorly maintained is not a justification to move it to the Boots and Farm. The maintenance problem will not magically be resolved there. Will the developed Boots and Property be a privately owned sports facility, thus reducing the participation of children from all income levels who currently enjoy our public Field of Dreams? We need to increase, not decrease, recreation. The construction of the surgery center will not be employing local people because the bids were from the Northeast Wisconsin Building and Construction Trades Council, which has tradesmen from all over Wisconsin, but only one carpenter from Sheboygan. Also, Bolt Company is located in Appleton, so we would be outsourcing. The city of Sheboygan has made the commitment to sustainability. The idea of building a cement structure over existing air and water purifying and CO2 absorbing green space is contrary to the city's commitment. In addition, according to the sustainability plan put forth by the Sheboygan Sustainability Tax Force, removing the community gardens from the east parcel goes against the local food commitment of this city committee. People from as far away as Appleton, Fond du Lac, Keele, and Plymouth are not constituents of the city, and yet they spoke and were counted as supporters of the Aurora Project at the last public input session. Of the 48 people who spoke, there were 17 opposed to rezoning compared to only five in favor of it who were not positioned to benefit financially from this deal through medical, construction, or service positions. Medical facility saturation is not in the best interest of the community when the South Side lacks these facilities. Originally, the city council was adamantly opposed to giving us more time before voting on the rezone, and yet the vote was tabled in order to skew the outcome, which was in our favor. Neither side can completely claim to know the will of the constituents without issuance of a referendum, although we collected over a thousand signatures to substantiate our claims. Although the Field of Dreams group has been accused of misinformation, we base our facts off of the documentation that we obtain from open records requests and city ordinances as opposed to the marketing tactics of Aurora's employees who mention irrelevant information because their comments of Aurora's benefits to the community are applicable at any site they choose to develop and are not specific to the Field of Dreams property. Verbal agreements made by Gravener and his team are not legally binding, so make sure that whatever Aurora promises is written in a contract when making your decision. Aurora will benefit from this deal. Therefore, how can we call their monies a donation? This is a transaction in contrast to the Hummich family's true donation that created the Field of Dreams. Also, since Aurora's threaten to leave the city if the Field of Dreams does not get rezoned, Aurora's money could also be considered a bribe. It has been repeated that we will benefit from the $200,000 in property taxes. Keep in mind that Memorial Hospital pays no property taxes due to its exemption status. Memorial's outpatient surgery center is currently within the hospital. All Aurora would have to do is build a hospital on the Field of Dreams attached to and being exempt from paying property taxes altogether, thus depriving the city of the promised and much hoped for revenue. In conclusion, I demand the council to follow city ordinances as each elected official was sworn to do when taking office. I echo Alderman Van Akron that this is the most contentious rezoning issue. Why so much opposition if it were in our best interest? In contrast to the Fields of Dreams group, I am not opposed to Aurora as a corporation. A company that buys a property not originally for sale behind closed doors while buying and not developing commercial properties, preventing other businesses from finding suitable locations in our city is not to be trusted. If we state that we are open for business, it begs the question. Excuse me, Any Lizzie. business? Could I have an extra minute? Hold on. Go ahead. Hold on. Go ahead. So, thank you. Preventing other businesses from finding suitable locations is not to be trusted. If we state that we are open for business, it begs the question, any business? Please just join me in attracting respectful corporations and companies that don't feel above the law of our ordinances, zoning regulations, park protection, and comprehensive plan. 
So I would just like you to definitely vote no on the rezoning. It's not uh, something you're going to regret in the long term. And either if Aurora truly wants to build in the city, as you stated you would like, then they can either build on their actual properties or, you know, then they didn't want to be in our city in the first place. And frankly, the fact that Aurora seems to be either amassing or hoarding commercial properties, that is also taking away from our tax base because any other corporation could be providing us taxes on those properties versus if Aurora doesn't develop them. Thank you. And next on the list is John Bemis. And John, could you give us your full name and address, please? Jonathan Bemis, 3612 Salmon Avenue. Okay, and you will have five minutes, sir. And I won't take them all, and I won't need an extra one. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the Common Council, you know why I'm here, and you know what I'm here to ask you to do. I stand in opposition to the proposed rezoning of the Field of Dreams that would allow for a medical office building and surgery center to be built there. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about why, and I'm not going to list a bunch of reasons, but <coughs> instead I'm going to make an appeal. I've already addressed the lack of green space on the northwest side of the city that would be brought about by this rezone. I've already made the appeal to you that I think this would be fiscally costly for the city. And I've reached out to several of you personally to encourage you to consider my perspective and that of my neighbors. It's in the spirit of perspective that I address you tonight, to ask you to step into our shoes for just a moment and try to truly appreciate where we're coming from. And by doing so, perhaps view what we're asking a little bit differently, maybe not quite so oppositionally. One of the messages that's been repeated over and over to us, the Field of Dreams group, is that the Field of Dreams is not a park. Perhaps by title, or by legal technicality, or by ownership, it doesn't fit the statutory definition of the park. That may be the case. But in reality, in the day-to-day, -day, and to the people who live near it, the fine distinctions of the law don't really matter. I've run, and sometimes walked, laps around the Field of Dreams perimeter for my own health. I taught myself to cross-country ski on the field in the wintertime. My four daughters and I have flown kites, played on the playground equipment, and just run for the sake of running around as a family. And I see from my kitchen window, contrary to things that have been said, my neighbors doing the same with a lot of frequency. To us, to the neighborhood, it's a place to play, to relax, to enjoy nature. To us, that makes it a park. I would ask you to see that from our perspective. Another commonly repeated idea is that we, the neighborhood residents and families, are being selfish. And I've used that word in quotes because it's been used. It's a charge that stings not because it's personal, but because it's baffling. The idea that any citizen would not desire to have their neighborhood be peaceful and green, the charge that we are uniquely selfish or short-sighted because we enjoy the environment we live in, far more than we would enjoy an environment with a bustling commercial facility is frankly dumbfounding. Every person has their own tastes. Some people prefer to live in busy downtown environs, and some people prefer to live in deeply rural areas. Everyone has their preference, and I'm not knocking anyone's choice. But for us to be called selfish, because we would like the neighborhood we moved to to remain similar in character, is meant only to paint us in the most negative light possible and distract from our rights as citizens. I would ask that you see that from our perspective. Finally, a popular argument among, against us has been that we are fighting something that would be good for the whole city and it's not right for us to fight a local battle. I won't remind the council at this time that the fiscal implications for all taxpayers are problematic at best. Instead, I'd like to make the point that representative democracy in this city is by its nature local. The residents of the city are represented by older persons from their wards, from their neighborhoods, not by council members at large. Zoning laws are designed to protect the continuity of specific local areas within a community. 
the reason that there is in Sheboygan and in municipalities across the country, and I've done my homework, the reason that there is a mechanism for residents close to a proposed rezone to protest, and the reason that hurdle is not very high, 20%, is because all zoning is truly local. <clears throat> On one side, the argument is that there are medical facilities on the east side of Taylor, and therefore the west side of Taylor would be fine for medical facilities as well. Our argument is simply the opposite, that west of Taylor, north of Superior, is almost totally residential and green, suburban, and therefore the green space, that is the Field of Dreams, is more in keeping with the residential character of the neighborhood than commercial development would be. Which argument weighs more merit? That's why it's a local battle. Of course it's local, and it should be. I would ask you to see that from our perspective. Thank you for your time. Thank you, John. And lastly, we have Scott Lewandowski. <laughs> Scott, can you give us your full name and address, please? Scott Lewandowski, 2201 Erie Avenue. And you will have five minutes, sir. OK, I might also need an extra minute. I'm here tonight to ask you to vote no for the rezoning. Two weeks ago at the April 8th meeting, I said, does anyone here really believe that if this project for Aurora goes through that it will only cost the city of Sheboygan taxpayers $800,000 like it was guessed at by Alderman Hammond in a Sheboygan Press article on February 9th? The city and all government agencies always underestimate what something will actually cost and overestimate the benefits. For two months, we have been told that the city of Sheboygan would get $200,000 a year in property taxes if the Aurora deal is approved. Then at the April 8th Common Council meeting, Alderman Hammond said the city would get $300,000 a year from Aurora. How did this figure jump so much? And where are the facts to back up this $300,000 figure? Or is this another case of making up figures to make things look better than they really are? Also remember these taxes the city of Sheboygan has to share this amount with the county, Sheboygan Area School District, and LTC. Also at the April 8th meeting, there were many people on both sides of the rezoning issue speaking at the public hearing. But most of the people that spoke for Aurora were not your constituents. So why are you listening to them? If you look at the minutes from the, that common council meeting, which you just approved as being correct, these people came from Two people from Keel, one from Fond du Lac, one from Appleton, one from Sheboygan Falls, one from Glen Beulah, one from Lewisburg, three from Plymouth, plus people from the town of Mosul. After the meeting, one Aurora employee came up to the Field of Dreams group when we were in the lobby and said, I support your efforts to save the Field of Dreams. The only reason I'm here is I'm still punched in. I'm getting overtime to be here. Tonight, no Aurora employees, so I guess they aren't getting paid to be here. So uh, you are listening to paid lobbyists. The contractors speaking were here because if they didn't support it, they knew they might not get the contract. More threats from Aurora. They will get to work no matter where Aurora builds. Aurora is either bullying people or paying people off to get their way. One alderman has said that it will be better to have the medical buildings all in one area because it will be easy to walk from one building to another. In case you aren't aware, Aurora doctors cannot see anyone that is in a St. Nicholas affiliated building, and the same for St. Nicholas doctors. They cannot see anyone in an Aurora affiliated building. Plus some insurance policies say that policy holder can only go to Aurora or St. Nicholas, but not both. So it really makes no difference where they're located. Finally, Aurora has made many claims to get you to agree to their destroying the current field of dreams. Have any of you seen any written legal contracts for the changes that will be made, such as at the last common council meeting, when the president of Aurora said that they would be paying for the cleanup costs of the contaminated land on the east parcel? Have any of you seen any legal documents to that? Since February, Aurora has been promising that four replacement fields would be built on the east parcel, along with a playground and a large parking lot. While the Save the Field of Dreams group has been saying that four fields would not fit because of the wetlands. You have been hearing this, 
And now I was able to get a document through open records again from the DNR. And on page eight, section two, on the part on approve, avoiding wetlands on the report sent to the DNR by the school district, it says the only approach to a high school athletic field project that could avoid the wetlands on the east parcel would be to limit the program to only the two soccer fields. This approach would result in each of the baseball fields being located in separate places because there are no alternative sites that can accommodate two baseball fields. Read the rest and you will discover there is no way that Aurora can deliver what they have been promising the children of Sheboygan for the past three months. Even with four alternative plans in this document, they knew this and have been less than truthful or honest with you. And I'm going to ask Alderman Herman to give that to Sue Richards to include in the minutes of the meeting. Read through this and you will see other stuff that has been promised is also not going to be done. As an example, on the East Parcel, there will be no playground and fewer parking places. I ask that each one of you read this and you will see that you have been lied to. Excuse me, and Scott. May I have one more minute? One more. Go, go ahead. I ask that each one of you read this and you will see that you have been lied to and bullied by Aurora and others to destroy something that the children of Sheboygan already have and use and enjoy. But don't worry, these people that have been dishonest with you for Aurora can always be successful selling used cars or selling insurance. Thank you. And that's it for public forum. Thank you very much. It's Next, we'll go on to Mayor's announcements. Uh, first of all, uh, just on the roll call, Aldermans Van Akron, Vanderweel, and Donahue are all excused. And next, I'd like to read an official proclamation. Whereas the National Head Start program is in its 50th year of serving the needs of low-income children and their families, and has established itself as the foremost early child development program, having locally served over 3,300 children and families, whereas the Sheboygan County Head Start is responsible for providing comprehensive family development services, including education, nutrition, health, and recognizes the value of preparing children to be school and life ready, and works with families to identify needs, connect community resources, and provide personal development resources and education for success. And whereas the Sheboygan County Head Start works with families and believes parents are their children's first and most influential teacher, and their home is their primary learning center, Head Start staff recognizes the remarkable strengths and courage of families as they provide the best for their children. And whereas Sheboygan County Head Start is a cost-effective, family-focused program that is enriched by strong community collaborations. I now, therefore, Mike Vandersteen, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, to hereby proclaim May of 2015 as National Head Start Month, and I urge the citizens to focus their attention on the role Head Start has played during these past 50 years, the changes it has brought about, the children's and families it has served, but it also to pay tribute to the present and past teachers, parents, and volunteers, and community leaders who have done so much for so many. And I'd also like to invite the citizens to attend the 50-year anniversary in open house on Saturday, May 2nd, at the Southside Alliance Church on County Road A from 1 to 3 p.m. Okay, next we'll go on to uh, the public hearings that are scheduled. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd move to open the hearings for public comments under the following guidelines, that the two hearings on the agenda are combined. Comments are limited to three minutes for each person speaking. Personal criticism of other individuals is out of order. The City Council will receive citizen input during the hearing and will not respond or debate. Public comments must pertain to Section 15.034 of the Zoning Code Ordinance of the Zordon Ordinance or Section 15.206 of the Zoning Ordinance. This deals with the definition and regulation of accessory structures of garages, sheds, greenhouses, and gazebos. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there anyone that wishes to be heard on the hearings that are scheduled today? Is there anyone who wishes to be heard? Is there anyone that wishes to be heard? Alderman Hammond. Thank you again, move to close. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Um, 
See no discussion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to consent agenda. That includes items 3.2 through 3.13. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file all our rows, accept and adopt all reports of committees, and put all resolutions and ordinances upon our passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of those items in the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Twelve eyes. Motion passes. Next is reports of officers. Items 4.1 through 4.44 will be referred to various committees of the new council. Uh, number five is resolutions. Item 5.1 is a resolution by Alderman Hammond authorizing the issuance and sale of up to 3,122,030 water utility revenue bonds series 2015 and providing for other details and covenants with respect here to Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the re on the revenue bond motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Advise. Motion passes. Item 5.2 will be referred to the Public Works Committee of the new council. I item 5.3 is a resolution by Alderman Heidemann authorizing and advertising for bids for the resurfacing of North A Street from Superior Avenue to North Avenue. Alderman Heidemann. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm going to move to suspend the rules. Second. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. Okay, then I'm going to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. And, and under discussion, this is uh, basically so that we can go for bids for the resurfacing of uh, North A Street. Thank you very much. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage. Twelve eyes. Motion passes. Reports under reports of committees, 6.1 is an RC by law and licensing to whom is referred RO number 244 of 1415 by the city clerk submitting various license application and recommends that taxi cab driver's license number 0417 be denied based on his failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on his application, his record of violations related to the licensed activity and his record as a repeat law offender and failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Thiel. Thank you, Mayor. I move the RC be accepted and adopted. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion. Yes, is uh, Clifford Jackson here this evening? I see he is not. He didn't appear after being called in twice to our committee. Thank you very much. Is there any other discussion? See none, will the clerk please call the roll? Twelve eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.2 is an RC by law and licensing to whom was referred RO number 268 of 1415 by the city clerk submitting various licenses and recommends that taxi cab driver's license number 0693 be denied based on his failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on his application, his record of violations related to the licensed activity, and his record as a repeat law offender and his oral withdrawal of his application. Alderman Thiel. Thank you, Mayor. I move the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion. Is Blake Murphy here this evening? I see he is not. Um, he stated to the committee he no longer wants his license. Thank you. Any other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk call the roll, please?
12 ayes. Motion passes. 6.3 is an RC by law and licensing to was referred RO number 268 of 1415 by the city clerk submitting various license applications and recommends that the taxi cab driver's license 0706 be denied based on her failure to accurately review all relevant convictions on her application, her record of violations related to the licensed activity, and her record as a repeat law offender as well as her oral withdrawal of application. Alderman Thiel. Thank you again. I move the RCE be accepted and adopted. Second. Under discussion? Is Marquita Johnson here this evening? Uh, Marquita decided to turn in her provisional, um, doesn't want it anymore. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Twelve Motion passes. Item 6.4 is an RC by finance to whom was referred resolution number 188 of 1415 by Alderman Hammond authorizing the transfer of appropriations in the 2015 budget to establish a revenue and appropriation for a grant from the U.S. Bank Foundation for Playground Equipment at King Park and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderman Hammond. Thank you again. Um, I just want to make a, a <coughs> quick shout out to U.S. Bank for their generous donation and for those um, inside the city that uh, worked on putting uh, this grant together for the new equipment at King Park. So again, thank you to city staff and also to um, U.S. Bank for their generous donation. Thank you. Any other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Twelve eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.5 through 6.10 will be referred to various committees of the new council. Under ordinances, item 7.1 through 7.3 will also be referred to committees of the new council. Moving on to section 8, matters laid over. Item 8.1 is RO number 284 of 1415, to whom was referred general ordinance number 48 of 1415 by Alderman Bellinger, amending the text of the zoning ordinance in section 15.034, definitions, so as to amend section .034. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and file and pass your ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Twelve eyes. Motion passes. Item 8.2 is an RO number 285 of 1415 by the City Planning Commission to whom was referred General Ordinance number 49 of 1415 by Alderman Bellinger amending the text of the Zoning Ordinance in Section 15.206. A detailed land use descriptions and regulations as to amend Section 15.206 parentheses 8 parentheses D. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and file and pass your ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll. Twelve ayes. Motion passes. Item 8.3 is resolution number 184 of 1415 by Alderman Ham Hammond, Bellinger, Carlson, Donahue, and Koth, authorizing a transfer of the appropriations in the 2015 budget to establish an appropriation for electrical equipment on South A Street and advertising for downtown trolley bus. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? 
Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Twelve ayes. Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to other matters. City Attorney. Thank you, Your Honor. Item 9.1 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2015 and June 30, 2016. That'll be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. Next, we'll go on to a contemplated uh, closed session. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We have two closed sessions this evening. Uh, first is uh, I move to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in Section 19851E of the Wisconsin Statutes for the purpose of deliberating the possible sale of public property, where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session related to the former Shirkert property and termination of a ground lease at 701 Riverfront Drive. Number two is a motion to convene into closed session under, uh, under Section 19851E of the Wisconsin Statutes for the purpose of delivering the positive tentative agreement with Local 483, Local 483 IAFF for the successor contract where bargaining reasons require a closed session. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Um, would the clerk please call the roll? Aye. <laughs> Can't do it. So that would be an aye, right? Twelve eyes. Motion passes. We'll take a short recess, and I'd just like to know the viewers at home that we'll be coming back to reconvene in open session for a vote following the closed session. Stand adjourned. Recess. 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 Reconvene. <laughs> Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, on um, item 11.1, resolution authorizing in entering into a tentative agreement with local aid, uh, 483 IAFF. I move to put the resolution upon this passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any motion, any discussion on the motion on the contract? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, before we adjourn, I, before we adjourn, I'd just like to take this opportunity to recognize Steve McLean and Ty Dassler. First of all, Steve, thank you. Steve's worked tirelessly for this city, always trying to make sure that we do things right. I know sometimes we'd like to take a shortcut or we'd like to do something a certain way, but he's convinced us that uh, we need to follow the rules all the time, and I want to appreciate, thank him for all of his advice over the years to the city council. Steve, do you want to well, make any Thank you, any Mayor, comments? and thank you, uh, Alderman. Uh, it's been a good ride for me, 28 years as city attorney. I calculated before the meeting that's uh, at, at 26 meetings a year, that's 728 regular meetings plus probably, you know, 60 or 70 special meetings, so that's probably 800 council meetings I've attended. I think I've missed three or four in that period of time, but I, I've thoroughly enjoyed working with the aldermen. I, uh, I, uh, it's been an honor working with you guys. A lot of citizens don't appreciate the uh, amount of time and effort you put into it for uh, uh, very little compensation. And uh, I've always been one to uh, really appreciate the fact that you take the effort to run and and uh, give back to the city through being an alderman. And I uh, have always really respected that in, in alderman. Uh, and I'll, uh, my term goes through the end of April, uh, so I'll, still be in the office, but I thought from a continuity standpoint with the new council starting tomorrow that uh, Chuck could sit in. He's going to get sworn in tomorrow. He officially won't be city attorney till May 1, but as assistant city attorney, he can preside at the meetings on my behalf. So, uh, 
So he'll be here, although Alderman Hammond just asked before the meeting if I'd also show up for the 29th meeting, and I guess I'll, I'll acquiesce to do that. Um, but uh, thank you very much. I appreciate having served the city, and uh, I don't plan on moving out of town or anything. I'll stick around and uh, just take it easy for a while, go up north this summer and enjoy things. So thanks a lot. Thank you, Steve. And I also want to recognize Alderman Dassler for his year, two years of service. We really appreciate the work that you've done, and it was great to get to know you. We're sorry that you're not going to continue, but who knows what might happen in the future. Sparky's hot dogs is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Sparky's hot dogs. Thank you. That's been a pleasure. Very good. Alderman Hammond. Move to adjourn. Second. Adjourn how? How many meetings did he miss? Signed die. Oh, like move to adjourn, signed die. Thank you. Second. Second. Moved and second to adjourn, sign die. Aye. All those in sign favor, aye. please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. We'll be here.